Hi guys, Steve here. On this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Dino Leash. Plus a nice little teleporting trick I don't think anyone else knows about. You can build a leash when you reach level 22. You need one electronic, 20 metal and 5 polymer. You build it in a smithy and I've already got the materials ready. You can smelt scrap metal into scrap metal ingots for the metal. You get scrap plus electronics when you farm lamp posts. And to get a polymer equivalent, you can farm corrupted nodules. You can get those by killing corrupted dinos in the wastelands. I'm on times 4 harvesting by the way. Ok we've got all the stuff, let's make a few and show you how it works. Right we have our creature, we don't want it to go anywhere so put a leash down. A red ring will appear for its affected radius. And you get a red lock icon above its name to show you that it's locked within the radius of this dino leash you've just put down. So you can enable wandering on your creature and it won't go outside this circle. When it gets to the edge it'll just stop. Think what to do, turn around. And just carry on walking. Let's make it aggressive. Use it as a guard dog. And this Velenosaur can shoot outside the circle, it just can't leave it. So you can have it guarding stuff and you know it won't go missing. You can put them on the roof of your building. Put a leash down. That's a bit too big. Make the radius smaller. Move the creature in. It's locked. You can enable wandering, put it on turret mode, and put it on aggressive if you want. And it'll shoot at anything or anyone coming near your base. You can use a dino leash for breeding. Your creatures will need to be on enabled wandering. Put them all inside the ring. We'll be able to breed and move around fine, but not escape the leash's radius. Plus, when you have gachas like this, you can get a group of owls, put them inside, and when they drop pellets, the gachas will eat them. Another way to use your dino leash is if you want your farming animals to collect resources in an area. I put a radius on long, pull the creatures to enable wandering. I'm just using gachas for now, but you can use dodex or anything you want. And then they'll go around and farm anything within this circle. Now we get onto the testing stage to see what else it can do. I put a dino leash on top of this roof. You can see it's circle below us so it still works. As down below is a Velanosaur. It has a red lock on its body, so it's working okay. So even though it's high up, it still creates a circle and a creature can't escape it. If you throw a creature down from a cryopod, the dino leash doesn't affect it, so there's no red lock on it. What you need to do is turn the dino leash off, deactivate it, See, new circle, and then turn it back on again. And you have a red lock. So now it's working. All you can do is just pick it up. You don't have to demolish it. Place it down fresh, and that works as well. And you can see the lock above its name again. Right, let's go on to crossing the circles. We have one dino leash down, won't let me place it that close, but I can place it there, but it's not letting me activate it. So I'm going to pick that up, move it a bit further away. That's far enough away to do a small circle, and that's a minimum one. But it won't let you extend them, I highlighted in red meaning it doesn't want you to overlap them. However, I will overcome that. Right, I'm now going to show you the different radius sizes 
and a nice little teleporting trick I found out. You have minimum, short, medium and long over different ranges. It's on short but I'm going to put it to minimum. A circle is reduced in size and a creature is now outside its radius. It still has a lock above it so it's connected to the dino leash but it's just going to stay there and stop moving. But if you go up to it and punch it, it'll jump all the way back into the circle. And that got me thinking. But before we get onto that, I'll show you the different radius sizes. This one's a minimum. Let's go to short. Then medium. And long. It goes all the way over here. Right, now onto the experimental stuff. You know when I punched for the Velenosaur and it jumped into the circle? Well, we have one here within the dino leash. We have a wall. Then the dino leash behind it. So I'm going to put this on minimum distance. There's still a lock on the Velenosaur, so I punch it. Oh, I was hoping it would go through. Almost, but not quite. On to the next test. I think if it's going to work, this will be it. I have a dino leash here. And a Velenosaur on the other side of this platform. With a large gap in between us. I put the radius to minimum. It's still connected. The lock's still on it. Fly over. A moment of truth. Oh, fell down. <laughs> Testing this for the very first time. To see if this will... Oh, it works. Look at that. Not bad, eh? Short range teleport jumps. Copyright New Blitz, 14th of December. Right, let's up the stakes a little bit. I'm on this high bridge. I have my Velenosaur there within the dino leash radius. The gap to the other side is quite wide and it's a very long way down. Just fly to the other side. Put the circle to minimum. Fly back. If you were two people You'll be able to do this together. There's a red lock above it. Punch it. Oh, look at that. It works. Long range dino teleportation. I've shown you that it can be done. Now it's up to you to come up with some ingenious ways to use it. It should be able to work on all creatures you can punch and move. But when I tried it on a large dino like a Rex, that doesn't move when you punch it, so it didn't jump across. Work out what moves them, like a whip or something else, and see if that works. You, my new blitz, are clever peeps. I'm sure you'll work it out. Right, over to birds and flyers. Put a dino leash down. Put his top jar on aggressive. And enable wandering. Go on, move your ass. Right, he's just going to walk around on the ground for now. I'm going to spawn a doo doo. Right, it's on aggressive, it attacked it and killed it. Now let's try an RG. Do it low level so it can kill it. That's as high as about the circle is wide. If you think of it as a globe, it's like stuck in a side of it. Okay. It'll probably be able to go down as it does up. So you'll be able to use it in water. Right, I'm going to fly up into the air, spawn another RG and see how high I can get it. See if it is a globe or if it is a cylinder going straight up. See if there's a limit to how high it can go. Yeah, it looks like it's a globe. It's not going any higher than that. Let's 
Let's make this bigger. Yeah, it seems to be working. It's going up higher anyway. Oop. That's a weird effect. It's not near the sides, but it keeps coming down. Well, it went higher. I'm going to fly out a circle. Make sure that's on follow. And it won't pass it. It'll still stay in its radius. Right, as there is a radius to how high it can fly in the globe. I've built a dino leash on top of this tower. So this should be the centre part and the birds will be able to fly out from here. Right, I've removed the top of the box because the dino leash is solar powered. See that little mirror thing on top. Right, there is a red lock on my top of Jara. I'm going to put a ceiling on top. Stop the sunlight. And the lock will go, like so. Delete this. Next, I'm going to try a greenhouse ceiling. Now the light should go through there, but it doesn't. It vanishes as well. I hate that sound. Next, a hatch frame. That works fine. Because it's got an open top. I'm going to put a hatch there. Hatch is closed, so that'll go off. Open a door. Come back on again. That's how you keep it powered. Right, I'm next to the top. Top of jar is unaggressive. Spawn an RG in. That's how high it goes. Just gonna fly in circles. Just make my way to the ground. It's not going any higher. Maybe a bit. Still yo-yoing up and down though, which is odd. Oh well, you can try that out for yourself as well. Right, here we have a Quetzal. Mount it. And you're not able to put a dino leash on the platform or on a foundation on the platform. Here's a raft. I was thinking maybe you could do it in the ocean. Nope. Put the foundation down and you still can't. You can put it down in the water, just not on anything that can move. Here's my base. I'm going to show you how to do a perimeter of dino leashes. Right, I'm going to put the first one down. You know how you can't put them next to each other because it interferes. Well, same rules apply. I can't even extend. Right, so we have three rings here. None of them can overlap. Right, I've just picked the other two up and I'm going to extend the first one to the maximum range. Put another one down. That's where it goes to. And because the other one's on long range, I can select long range on this one as well and the two circles overlap like so. I was hoping a creature would be able to walk out of one circle and into another and like count them as the same circle but unfortunately it looks like it stops at the edge of the circle it's in. However now that you can overlap the circles you'll be able to make a secure perimeter with no gaps in it. Just fly out of this one. Land. 
put the range to long. No other range will be able to work. There we go. There's another overlap. You just have to have dinos in both rings. That's about it. Remember that you can use dino leashes when you're hatching babies. I've taught you everything you need to know about using them, so I'm sure you'll be fine. And don't forget about the teleport jump trick. I'm sure it'll come in useful for you. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe if you've not already, and click the bell icon to get notified of when I upload next. There's links to other videos at the end, comment on what you would like to see, and there's a link to Patreon if you feel like supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye!